Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am now opening hearing number 10 of the 187th period of sessions of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights. It's, um, hearing number 10 is entitled Access to Justice for Victims of Trafficking in Persons in the Americas. And it was requested by Global Alliance Against Trafficking Women, G-A-A-T-W. My name is Margaret Mary McCauley. I'm president of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights, and I'm the Rapporteur for People of African Descent and Against Racism and for the Rights of Older Persons. With me on the panel uh, are the second vice president and Rapporteur for LGBTI Persons, Commissioner Roberta Clark, the Rapporteur for Women and for Memory, Truth and Justice, Commissioner Hulisa Mantilla, the Rapporteur for Human Mobility and for Human Rights Defenders, Commissioner Joel Hernandez. Also present at the hearing is the Deputy Executive Secretary for Monitoring, Maria Claudia Polido. Um, I greet you on behalf of all the members of the commission and the staff of the commission um, most cordially and thank you very much civil society for being with us today let me first um, explain the distribution of time uh, to which we have to be in obedience and that is civil society 25 minutes the inter-american commission panel 25 minutes Comments from civil society, 22 minutes. So you have two tranches. And then um, the, I will close the, the hearing thereafter in three minutes. Before we start, could I just um, remind you to keep your eye on the clock when you're speaking. And for those who have joined us online, thank you for being present and for being interested. I would just state what the object of the meeting is, which is for us, this uh, um, Inter-American Commission, to receive information from civil society to, um, on, on the worsening of the conditions which give rise to human trafficking and contemporary forms of slavery as a result of the failure to comply at the domestic level, with due, the due to, uh, as, the, as a result of the failure to comply at the domestic level with the duties to respect and guarantee human rights by states, and also their failure in relation to their obligations to due diligence. Additionally, um, they would present evidence on access to justice for victims of trafficking in the region, especially their right to truth, justice, and reparations. With that, um, and having mentioned the time and the need to keep one's eye on the clock, I now give the floor to civil society to commence their presentations. So thank you so very much. Please commence. Muchas gracias. Estimadas y estimados comisionados, las organizaciones... Thank you very much. Dear commissioners, the Latin American organizations that make up the Global Alliance Against Trafficking in Women in Latin America and the Caribbean denounce the worsening of the basic conditions for the occurrence of trafficking and contemporary forms of slavery that stem directly from the failure of the states of the region to respect and guarantee the due diligence obligation of the state with regard to human trafficking and uh, contemporary forms of slavery. That is, their duty is to prevent, investigate, and punish such crimes and provide full reparations to their victims. In this regard, we will focus on analyzing the evidence of possible scenarios of inaction and willingness or inability of various states in the region, such as Argentina, Brazil, Colombia, Chile, Guatemala, Mexico, and Peru, where recurrent failures to fulfill their obligations to comprehensively address this criminal phenomenon in a genuine manner, pursuing the activities and repairing the consequences of the activities of those individuals who appear to be responsible for the commission of the crime. In light of their international obligations, and based on their national regulatory framework. 
have been observed. In public hearings at the 179th, 180th, and 182nd sessions of the Commission, our organizations have warned about the serious situation of human trafficking in our region in the context of the post-pandemic, the migration crisis, the economic recession, and the expansion of organized crime and corruption. However, state responses have been insufficient, precarious, or non-existent. The Inter-American Court has recognized that the right to not be subjected to slavery, servitude, forced labor, uh, slave of women and women trade, which is essential to the American Convention in accordance to the Article 6 of the American Convention, paragraphs 1 and 2. Thus, trafficking in persons constitutes a serious violation of human rights when states fail to comply with the obligation to prevent, protect, investigate, punish, and redress the victims, ensuring in turn the non-repetition of the facts, even when those responsible are individuals or non-state organizations, as has been held in repeated jurisprudence since the case Velasquez Rodriguez v. Honduras. In Latin America and the Caribbean restricted migration policies have also contributed to exacerbating the risks of transnational trafficking and international trafficking of internationally displaced persons and irregular migrant populations, especially with the exponential increase in migration flows from Venezuela. In effect, these policies have not prevented migration, but only made it more cruel, inhuman, and dangerous, risking respect for human rights it, from Article 6 and the general obligations we mentioned, because uh, the transfer is done uh, in illegal, uh, in an illegal context, and that is taking advantage of to subject migrants to exploitation, and they cannot resist because they fear to be expelled or uh, they fear to uh, run out of money. International standards, especially the obligations of states that have ratified the convention, establish that states' parties must comply with general and specific duties. The duty to respect human rights entails the obligation of states not to violate internationally recognized rights by action or omission. Regarding the duty to warranty, Regarding the duty to warranty, the right recognized in Article 6 of the Convention, the court has indicated as obligations of the states to initiate ex officio and immediately an effective investigation to identify, prosecute, and punish those responsible when there's a complaint or well-founded reasons to believe that persons subject to its jurisdiction are subjected to uh, one of the cases provided for in Article 6 of the Convention. An example that shows the vulnerability and non-observance of the duty to warranty is the case of Yolanda, a woman victim of Venezuelan nationality who was not recognized as such by the Territorial Committee on Trafficking of Persons of Cucuta, Colombia, which prevented her from being granted the respective protection and assistance measures. According to the information gathered to the problems in classifying the, the crime, we should also add the conditioning of the assistance and protection of Yolanda to the criminal investigation and the lack of an identification based on evidence, as well as irregularities in the assistance process, which constitute some of the shortcomings of the anti-trafficking policy in Colombia, resulting in a situation that violates Article 6.1 of the American Convention. Now, if we also take into account what the inequalities uh, uh, that, that uh, sorry, that extend the uh, human trafficking that have to do with gender, social class, race, and are translated into exploitation, the generation of public policies for protection before judicialization is of the essence. So it is fundamental to have a, a gender-based approach where prevention, detection, and protection consider the uh, vulnerabilities 
and the intersectional discrimination that may uh, that women may suffer that was uh, set by the inter-american court in cases like cotton field and in the case of human trafficking in uh, Lopez v. Venezuela. This last ruling, the court links the obligations of the American Convention on Human Rights to the Belém do Pará Convention and the establishing of obligations to eradicate violence against women. But the states in the region seem not to uh, follow this jurisprudence. Go ahead, Mariana. Your microphone is microphone phone is off. Yes, uh, these standards have been analyzed by the organizations that requested this hearing, and although progress has been made in respecting and complying with them, there are still measures that the states must adopt, of which we would like to highlight the following in the area of access to justice. Regarding the duty of prevention, it is considered that most of the states in the region still have institutional problems that have a direct impact on measures to address human trafficking. In fact, we have been able to identify the limitations in the articulation and coordination between national, territorial, and intersectorial entities the uh, scarce public investment and allocation of resources for the prevention of the structural factors that make possible the magnitude of human trafficking, the need for specializing training, specialized training of justice and protection operators, especially in the application of approaches such as the victim-centered or gendered focus, which demonstrate that we are in a region with very serious violations in terms of rights, equality, and autonomy of women and girls in particular, but there are also particular challenges for some states with respect to the uh, improvement of their regulatory frameworks, especially the criminal offenses related to the Article 6 of the American Convention. With regards to the duty to investigate, the Inter-American Court has insisted that for the state to satisfy the duty to adequately guarantee various rights protected in the Convention, including the right of access to justice, it is necessary that it fulfills its duty to investigate, prosecute, and if appropriate, punish and make reparations for these facts. Part of this duty includes the strengthening, uh, includes strengthening the proactive situation of the investigation of situations of human trafficking and other forms of exploitation, because it has been demonstrated that the diversity of scenarios and modalities of the crime are expanding. And one of the main challenges is the fight against organized crime, criminal activity linked to uh, the forced labor of migrants in the agro extractive sectors and in the general economic sectors that are intensive in unskilled labor. We should also consider uh, the practices that appear before these uh, criminal organizations, like illegal adoptions, which were solved by the Inter-American Court in the case Ramirez Escobar v. Guatemala. We insist in the need to overcome the lack of specialized capabilities or skills in officials, the um, lack of resources and the limitations in the use of uh, methods for uh, bringing about evidence, the uh, nexus between uh, with other uh, crimes like money laundering and the responsibility of legal entities or the uh, legal processes that are excessively long that may take between four to ten years, which of course re-victimizes those who were affected. The states also demonstrate that their judicial bodies maintain challenges related to the duty to punish, since it has been detected that the lack of motivation of judicial decisions continues and the violation of the right to know the reasons behind the decision expressed in a weak, irregular jurisprudence, which maintains the similar criteria with respect to the elements of the type. In some cases, judicial decisions include errors in terms of law in relation to the criminal definition, demand requirements or thresholds that exceed the legal definition, and do not adequately argue the non-configuration of the crime only because the victims are no 
are, are no longer in a situation of vulnerability. In other cases, labor exploitation is ruled out because there was a payment to the victim, ignoring the context of exploitation or the ILO indicators are not recognized in the case of forced labor. But perhaps the most serious and complex aspect to combat is the application of structural discriminatory stereotypes and prejudices in judicial decision and their incidence in a high number of acquittals. A particular concern in this regard is the recurrence of gender stereotypes in the region's criminal justice system, which are leading to widespread impunity for human trafficking and forced labor. And uh, they go against the uh, knowledge that is already uh, Proven, and this is the case for women, adolescents, and children, and members of the LGBTIQ population. The intersectionality of these stereotypes is aggravated when they coincide with other constructs, such as the ideal victim, which raises the thresholds of conviction, discard trafficking hypotheses based on discriminatory reasoning, and absolve the perpetrators, increasing impunity. In this regard, these situations were detected in Peru, where several rulings state that the age of the victim is not taking into account. And the judiciary is not surprised that an adolescent works as an escort in a bar. And in Chile, where alleged traffickers have been acquitted despite having proven the recruitment, transfer, and harboring, but not considering that the exploitation suffered is of the magnitude required by the law. And in some cases, they actually uh, ask uh, the uh, crime of the category of crimes against humanity to act. And that is why in many countries, uh, judges and uh, judges and prosecutors do not provide civil reparations or maybe only provide uh, $300 as a compensation, such was the case of Peru. But in the system, in the just legal system, the state does not believe the victims. Police officers, prosecutors, and judges lack the necessary empathy and do not believe in the pain and physical, psychological, and emotional pain children, women, and men go through in the entire region. Go ahead, please. Before this situation, we would like to raise the importance of requesting the Inter-American Commission and the OAS members the following petition with emphasis on aspects related to access to justice. Number one, that the states strengthen their efforts to overcome the current punitivist approach and evolve to preventive and systemic approaches, promoting information campaigns and the promotion of a victim-centered approach. We also re urgently request them to respond to the expectations of training and greater tools that the official them officials themselves have to avoid falling into human rights violations by omission of the duty to warranty, including the uh, training in soft skills and the full application of transgender and intercultural uh, cultural approaches. Also, there should be robust legal frameworks that adequately criminalize trafficking and uh, autonomous forms of exploitation in order to avoid impunity gaps. Two, the states must prioritize the generation of evidence and the management of truthful and consistent information on the magnitude of this crime, an omission repeatedly requested by civil society organizations. To this end, uh, sorry, three states must significantly increase their efforts to improve their uh, migration policies to avoid them from contributing to creating a market that fosters the exploitation of, of persons. Victims do not report this due to the threat they receive. And in this scenario, it's fundamental to respect the principle of non refoulement Four, in the last few years, there have been an increase of human trafficking of children and adolescents, to which the impact of exploitation in virtual uh, environments and in context of human mobility is added. The Inter-American Commission is requested to uh, 
conduct consultations on the standards of uh, protection of the rights of children and adolescents for the member states. Five states must promote uh, comprehensive health programs with an emphasis on mental health and on the other hand to guarantee the existence of uh, health pro programs and, and teams uh, able to formulate protocols and health policies that address physical and psychological effects throughout the, pro the program. Six, the, the in compliance with due diligence uh, where states are obligated with the member state, we request to promote the implementation of public policies to promote an initiative and uh, and due diligence in businesses, especially to promote the fact that the organizations that persecute crimes conduct uh, adequate searches and investigations and gatherings of evidence and to investigate long-term and medium-term consequences after these oversight seven we also consider that the state must uh, contemplate a robust legislation adopting all necessary measures against the businesses that pr that participate in this crime in compliance with the prevention and guarantee of standards established by international law. Continuing, continuing with our petition, we request from the Inter-American Commission to request from the state to strengthen the networks of judicial cooperation and regional communication between the countries of origin, transit, and destination to facilitate the collection and exchange of information, as well as other background information that is necessary for an expeditious investigation while maintaining the necessary protection for the victims. In this framework, states should avoid further delay in approving the draft third work plan for comprehensive responses to trafficking in persons in the Western Hemisphere 2021-2026. States have the obligation, in accordance with international human rights instruments and standards, to provide victims with due reparation. This is why we request that the states can share their experiences and the creation of funds for reparation or the use of mechanisms such as the extension of domination of um and we we request the states to develop these experiences also we recommend to create social and labor reparation programs with the creation of training projects to strengthen the labor reinsertion of women and and men who are victims we request the commission to urge states to comply with the recommendations by uh, 2021 uh, report and to provide resources for its implementation. Also, we remind that in the framework of the internal armed conflict, there is human trafficking, so a reparation for these uh, victims is required. It's in it's important to uh, address policies of truth and justice. Also, uh, training for public officials, since most of them uh, are not effective, and they should be mandatory. Also, the program should be expanded for uh, forensic um, staff, uh, border police, and other officials so that it, sexual exploitation can be prevented within the uh, prison. In order to finalize our petition, we request from the Commission to urge the states to uh, strengthen the uh, efforts to identify victims, particularly indigenous communities or uh, children, migrants and indigenous women and children who are detained for uh, drug trafficking uh, under the pressure of gangs. Also, in order to guarantee the access to justice, uh, investigation must be strengthened using uh, different mechanisms of intelligence 
when there are indications that a criminal structure is involved so that they can be dismantled, including the relationship between human trafficking and criminal structures within the penitentiary systems. 16, to promote the investigation of crimes related to human trafficking, especially corruption and money laundering, strengthening the capacities of uh, justice operators, strengthening the persecution of crimes, against uh, asset laundering in the framework of Gafilat and also urging states to strengthening uh, monitoring of institution of financial institutions and to address corporate responsibility within public and private institutions. 17th, we request the states to investigate backgrounds applying precautionary measures such as uh, with embargoes and other measures uh, so that those assets can be destined to the reparation of victims. We request the commission to urge countries to submit information as regards the uh, sentences of money laundering related to human trafficking Eighteen, uh, to urge the states to finance the, the struggle against uh, human trafficking, for example, using some taxes from sectors such as tourism for programs of for uh, victims to fund also a reparation uh, fund. Also, to promote new international standards so that states can comply with the recommendations we have suggested. It's important for the states to have their internal framework be in line with the international, inter-American ones so that victims can be reinserted and be informed of the services provided by the states as regards the willingness that they can have to cooperate with the state or not. 20, we request the Inter-American inter Commission to institutionalize a space of dialogue for the whole region to follow up on the compliance of the recommendations that this, the commission issues for the state and its country reports and in local visits. And finally, our petition concludes with the request of the Inter-American Commission to draft an annual report to classify the, the countries of the region in accordance with the compliance of these recommendations in terms of human trafficking, maybe through a report with goals and verification methods, um, who the, the funds are allocated to so that the civil society can follow this up. There should be responsibility included for the countries that do not comply with international obligations in terms of human trafficking victims. We thank you for this opportunity for uh, receiving this petition and listening to us, and we are here available for the next steps to be taken in, in the inter-American system to protect the rights of the victims. Thank you. Thank you very, very much for your um, um, statements and submissions and and requests um, uh, for recommendations for what can be done in this very serious matter. Um, I, I now uh, will now come to hear the commission members and I invite uh, the rapporteur um, for uh, um, uh, human mobility and human rights defenders, commissioner, Joel Hernandez, who is the thematic rapporteur for both of these peoples. Thank you. Gracias, gracias, Presidenta. Muchas gracias. Thank you, thank you, Madam President. Thank you to the organizations that took part in this audit, in this hearing. You are bringing here a very relevant topic in the context of human mobility, which is frequently invisible due to different reasons. I will go back to that in a minute. And that invisibility in some time, in some opportunities have also had an impact in our own work. We have to be self-critical here. I seek to do this on a frequent basis. In the commission, we have seen the rights of people in human mobility situations in its totality. And we have managed to point to the fact that these are mixed 
uh, influxes where we see different sort of, sorts of persons in human mobility, including victims of human trafficking. But what is lacking from us is a much detailed uh, understanding of the situation of vulnerability that victims of human trafficking found themselves in, especially women and children and girls. And this, which happens in different uh, fields, is also observed at the national levels in how migration is managed and then how people access justice, as you have very well put it. This is the main observation that I uh, have as a takeaway from your presentation. There have been a lacking of, of public policies that are designed for justice operators so that they can distinguish, they, they can differentiate the situation of persons who are in human mobility and those who are being victims of human trafficking. I don't think it's in it's necessary to develop further human rights standards. I believe that there is a legal uh, framework that is quite solid. You started by mentioning the instrumental uh, tools for the commission, the American Convention, the Convention of Belém do Pará, but there are other instruments. And please let me highlight one of them that I think is fundamental. And I think is the protocol of the Palermo Convention on Human Trafficking. In that instrument, <laughs> we see something very important for international law, which which is that that instrument basically manages to characterize as victims those people who are being uh, targeted, who are being subjected to Para poder asistir a las víctimas de la trata y lo distingue de las personas que se encuentran en otra situación de movilidad. Of y ahí people está. who are found in human mobility. And this is clearly established. We see the obligations in terms of health, uh, assistance, even migration facilities for people to remain in a territory uh, so that they can uh, move forward in criminal processes against their perpetrators. What I see with concern is that there is a lack of uh, implementation of these principles. There's a lack of training for uh, justice operators. In the examples that you bring, they are not able to duly uh, identify victims and especially uh, they cannot act with a gender perspective because these are women and girls who are found frequently in this situation. So I believe that it, it's important, to, two things are important. First, to be able to work hand in hand with other international organizations and with the civil society to first raise awareness for all stakeholders and that, that this exists. And second, to provide training to justice operators so that they can apply international standards. In my in the second in your second intervention, I would like to know if you have uh, you are in touch with international organizations, especially the United Nations Office on Drug and, and Crimes. Uh, a couple of, uh, uh, some time ago, they launched a campaign called uh, Blue Heart that sought to raise awareness and, and to prevent human trafficking. I don't know if it's still ongoing, but in terms of training, I also would like to say that we are available because that is the most concrete contribution that the commission can, can make, which is uh, training judges, justice operators, migration agents, so that they can uh, apply the standards of protection for human trafficking victims. Your petition has been very long and we thank you for it. It's been uh, ambition, certainly. It's not all within our uh, maneuvering space, let's say, I, I want to be honest, but it really helps us to understand the dimension of this topic and how our approach has to be much deeper. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, thank you, my brother, Joel. I now invite the 
um, second Gracias, right Joel. The, to make the um, your interventions. Thank you, Roberto. Thank you very much, um, uh, President McCauley. And good afternoon to everyone here. And I want to uh, join Commissioner Hernandez in thanking you for this very rich discourse, um, rich and at the same time disheartening discourse. But the more we know, the more we need to know, and, and, it, and it drives our actions. So I want to uh, agree with what I heard. I think we have intersecting structures of inequality that generate risk. Uh, I should say inequality is an, an equal context. So precarious circumstances, as we know, at, at national level, drive people to move or force people to move. And they move with all of their uh, vulnerabilities and they move in situations of danger. Um, we, we also are living in a region with generally high levels of inequalities. And it seems uh, quite a bit of fatalism and acceptance of inequalities within countries and inequalities between countries. So we are really uh, have our backs to the wall about how we're going to address this egregious uh, level of, of, of um, this uh, violation of human rights, because this violation of human rights is connected to so many other violations of human rights. So I want to say, although the context is challenging, I think that we do have the tools and we have the will to, to push forward. One of the things I wanted to ask those of you who are here, um, first to maybe think about the patterns of vulnerability. Um, and I think maybe that's what her, Commissioner Hernandez was speaking to. What do we know about uh, who is in harm's way, who has been trafficked and for what purposes? We know of course there's a lot of gendered factors in, in, in trafficking and, and women and girls are trafficked, they're trafficking to sexual exploitation and in sexual context of sexual violence. Also for domestic work, um, children and adolescents are being uh, are in, in situations of forced labor, unremunerated labor, you know, there's a whole range of, of, of conditions that uh, people are being held in, in within uh, a tra the trafficking scenario. And so I think it'd be useful though, if it, I'm sure it must be done, but certainly for the commission to map, to seek to map in collaboration with the organizations working on this, the patterns of vulnerability, um, because I think that the patterns of vulnerability will also direct us to the kinds of work that we need to do. We focus a lot on the state, on state actors, and of course states are the ones with the obligations to respect, protect, and fulfill rights. And so the need for regulation, but really importantly, the need for the enforcement of that regulation. Just this morning, we were hearing in one of our sessions uh, about a country where there is regulation in place, uh, but there's been no, there be, there've been no um, prosecutions under trafficking legislation. So we know that there's a big gap between having a framework in place and implementing that framework. And, and oftentimes the failure in implement, implementation is connected to governance deficits, connected to corruption, connected to a web of state actors who are failing in their duty. And they're failing in their duty with impunity because again, there's not sufficient monitoring of what is happening at the level of state agencies. So we do need to do the training, I agree with you, and particularly around gender stereotypes. Uh, with the justice system, but we also need to be monitoring and perhaps docu and document, perhaps and documenting what we're monitoring about how states are responding or not responding. I think it's part of the state accountability um, framework that we all agree um, is needed. So I just want to, you know, also ask for the petition, which I think you uh, there are quite a number of, of, of suggestions and requests and recommendations. And it would be useful for us to get a copy of that so that we can consider it more closely and consider where the commission's mandate will allow it to um, engage in some or if not all of the recommendations as needs. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, um, Madam Second Vice President. I now um, call on my sister uh, commissioner, Ulisa Mantilia the Rapporteur for Women's Rights and for Memory, Truth and Justice to intervene. Muchas gracias, Thank you very much, Madam President. I will start by cordially greeting you and my colleagues, but most 
especially those participating of this hearing, Carolina, Mariana, Luis Enrique, Vivian, thank you so much, not, not only for the work at this hearing, for, but for your daily work, because you are representing the victims and your voice is very important today. As my colleague said, the, uh, you're, you have a lengthy petition, but it's very important because the commission will have mandate for some of the items, but that helps us to have a line for monitoring. I see uh, Assistant Secretary Pulido noting because it will allow us to understand the state of the issue because it will allow us to incorporate our work as part of our mandate. The second element I wanted to mention and that you have pointed out is the issue of intersectionality. Victims, it's not the same if they are older, younger, children, indigenous, Afro-descendants, and that's the difficulty to visibilize the situation, right? And also, as Carolina was saying, uh, how long it takes for the judiciary to solve this, these cases, because the um, also the uh, legal knowledge may not be the uh, strong suit of the um, of officials in very uh, distant regions. And another thing I wanted to mention was uh, gender-based violence, because even though men can also be victims of trafficking, but I wanted to focus on women. There's a continuity of gender-based violence. Women or girls may be at home or are victims of um of trafficking, there's always gender-based violence. And that's how all these stereotypes appear in the uh, regulations, in the response of, of authorities who sometimes make no distinction between the victim and the trafficker. They arrest them all as if they were all part of the crime. We're actually talking about uh, victims of human trafficking. So I know you have information maybe you can provide that information now or later but what's going on with sexual violence against women and girls who are raped and get pregnant what's happening to those babies who are born are uh, they also uh, do they also suffer more human rights violations and another thing you mentioned, and which I appreciate, was the possibility of punishment to those companies that facilitate these situations. So I would like to have some information about the uh, links. As Commissioner Clark was saying, she was talking about corruption between the traffickers and the officials. But also, if we talk about extractive activities, mining, especially where mining, uh, where mining camps are the site for these kinds of situations where women and girls are subjected to human trafficking. And another thing that you also know is that there are certain rulings or cases that get no justice domestically. They, can, they could arrive at the system. They could get to our system. The issue of precautionary measures, which are granted before a situation of serious risk. And then there's no need to exhaust domestic remedies. These are resources the commission has. I am very concerned about the issue of extractive activities and private companies, because in many cases, we're talking about bars, which are installed on the side of the mining camps and the companies sell liquor or facilitate uh, the these crimes. So we would like to know if there are uh, good practices where companies say, no, I'm not going to do this. Do you have any sort of information? Because everything will be very useful to the commission. And we are at your disposal. Thank you once again. I know that the these hearing, this hearing will be seen by other persons, maybe victims or former victims of human trafficking that will feel your support. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you very, very, very much, um, my sister, Julissa. I um, now um, invite the um, Assistant Executive Secretary for um, Head of Monitoring, to intervene, Maria Claudia Polito. 
Thank Muchas you. Gracias, señora Thank you very much, Mother, <laughs> Madam President. I would just like to add to what was said by Commissioner Hernandez and by Commissioner Mantilla that, yes, the Commission had a strong debate for many years about its jurisdiction in terms of working with human trafficking or uh, just leaving it to the uh, rapporteurship of migrant persons and their families. That's how the commission decided to change the name of the rapporteurship and give it a larger scope through human mobility, which is what we have now and which also includes the phenomenon of human trafficking. In the last few years, the commission has tried to use the different mechanisms at its reach to move forward in uh, addressing trafficking. This is the second thematic hearing we have had on this issue. There was a previous one in December 2020. Press releases have been issued about this particular topic. Even there was a resolution 419, which is the resolution with the inter-American principles on the human rights of all migrants and refugees, which also includes principles about the victims of human trafficking, and that tried to provide some guidance to the states in terms of this topic. But I would like to focus on the effort made by the commission in its annual report from 2022 which included human trafficking and looks at the different countries in the region. And it not only identifies the uh, existing challenges, it also points out good practices and progress by some states. So we have um, Taken, we have taken notice of the 21 petitions by the civil society. We believe that the request of a thematic report is very timely and relevant. And under the, the leadership of Mr. Hernandez, the Rapporteur for Human Mobility, we will be working on our strategic plan for 2024 so that this request is taking into consideration uh, of course, restricting it to the uh, scope of the specific um, sorry, jurisdiction of the Commission. It's important not to generate expectations, in particular with such a delicate issue, for the Commission at least, but we have the expertise from uh, the Executive Secretariat, so we can address this request if the commission decides to. That is all for me, Madam President. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Maria. Uh, Claudia, as usual, you brought us a great deal of information to interplay. I, I, I will just take a couple of minutes to make a few comments. Uh, I, um, I think the, the human trafficking situation is, is horrendous. Um, it hasn't decreased, in fact. Um, there are those who have studied it and are of the firm belief that it is increasing each month that um, trafficked persons are so valuable a commodity in the, among the criminal-minded and those who are inhuman enough to engage in it, that it is a, a source of a great deal of money for them. And they are not uh, slowing down in their, in their activity, but um, adding more victims almost each day. And it is, it, it is sad to say, that despite the fact, for instance, in the Caribbean, I think almost most of the Caribbean countries have passed legislation about uh, um, trafficking uh, in persons and, and uh, have set up uh, uh, committees, uh, groups, and done training, but it is not sufficient to do a set of training to the police 
and you go off patting your shoulder and say, well, the police are trained. Or the, or the judges, you have one short training session and they are trained, and the, which is what has been happening. Training has to be continuous in this matter because the traffickers engage in all sorts of new and innovative ways of getting through any legal uh, situation which is set up to decrease their success. So therefore you cannot just train people once. And indeed states must also inform and train their public because lots of times the traffickers walk through and in the public with their victims and some member of the public who has been informed properly can notice this and bring it to the attention of the authorities. We we'll have to do that if we're really seriously thinking of combating, combating this. And of course, we know that when people, the desperate people who take on safe routes to go to their, their countries of, of their dreams to have a better life, those routes are so unsafe and the states do not, of course, pro provide any form of security for them. Uh, um, that these are the states are in fact creating fertile grounds and fields for the traffickers to get victims. And not only that, do they get them for their sexual purposes and sexual professions, but also for other things. There are instances of farmers who engage with traffickers because they need women for their field workers on, on spot, all sorts of things happening. And states are not aware of half of them. So it is so good that you have paid attention to this and you've given us in, uh, information and we can work together to advance the knowledge and convince states that they cannot sleep on this matter. They have to be forever checking it, being more innovative and so on. In the training, in the information which they gather and in, in the actions. And I really sincerely thank you for being with us today and for your continuing to work with us. Please um, do not forget to send us a copy of your presentations so that we can have a, a better look time to really have a firmer look at them and use them. And of course, don't forget to contact us about technical support at any time in, in this matter. We're willing, ready and able to work with you. So thank you again for being here. I now to put, give you back the floor for you to make um, further comments and any closing um, suggestions and you have 22 minutes so thank you civil society 22 minutes thank you Luis do you want to start Luis Luis Enrique would you like to start I thought Vivian was going to start. She was the first presenter, but I'm, of course, glad to start. Thank you very much, uh, dear commissioners, for your words, for your welcoming words, uh, for our presentation. And also thank you for your interest in the problem of human trafficking. The collective has decided that each of us will um, make a general uh, comment for five minutes to reply to some of your comments and questions. We have different approaches, and so it would be difficult for us to, to just join all, all our answers. So first, on my behalf, I would be in agreement with what Mr. Hernandez said with regard to the importance of taking into account the relationship between the different levels of development of international law. 
specifically the relationship that has to be there between the Palermo Protocol and the American Convention on Human Rights. I think in the Palermo Protocol, there is undoubtedly a reference not only to the obligation to protect persons, but also to other obligations that we mentioned, for example, the obligation to prevent and persecute crime. However, the organization that I uh, represent CHS Alternativo. I think I'm also speaking on behalf of the Global Alliance that we are uh, representing as well. We believe that it's important to understand that the Palermo Protocol was an instrument that was created specially uh, to persecute crime and not as much uh, targeted at protection. And what we noticed is that in practice, there are some uh, deficiencies in terms of protection systems for human trafficking victims. And these are based in many cases in an er erroneous interpretation of the Palermo Protocol. Also, the Office of the High Commissioner, I'm sorry, of the, the Office of the United Nations uh, Against Drug Trafficking and Crimes is rethinking the protocol and in fact we have to rethink it in in terms of latin america and the caribbean because human trafficking in the region also requires a debate which at the moment took place in the framework of of european countries and maybe also in africa but this was a debate where our countries well, did not really took part. Uh, so we are in agreement with the fact that that relationship between the systems has to take place. In CHS Alternativo, we are in touch with international organizations, specifically with the Office of the High Commissioner of the United Nations. I'm sorry, with the Office of the United Nations Against uh, Drug Trafficking and Crime. They have uh, launched an initiative to articulate organizations of civil society to, among other things, focus on the protection of victims and the development of new standards and best practices on this matter. This is an initiative that is being promoted in the context of one of the projects that the office is implementing in the region. It's a program also that has a global scope. It's important then to take that into account. I would like to also mention uh, something that was mentioned by Commissioner Clark, which is that uh, which is difficult to, to answer, but of course, it's something that we can see constantly in our organization, which is that the only civil society organization in Peru that has a legal and psychosocial assistance center for human trafficking victims is ours. We provide assistance to human trafficking victims, and that has allowed us to analyze what she was saying, which is the patterns of vulnerability. What we noticed is, even though it seems obvious, is that there is an impossibility of creating uh, accurate patterns with regard to how and, and when a person is uh, exposed to human trafficking, because people who have become victims of human trafficking and have been assisted by our legal center is uh, are quite varied. The, the education level or the level of information that they may have on human trafficking cases or uh, sexual exploitation cases is not necessarily uh, central in terms of their vulnerability. We have seen cases of children, for example, in the city of Quito, 
who have been trained by organization, who have gone through process of two or three years for of training, and however, they have been victims of uh, uh, exploitation. Recently, to, to conclude my intervention, recently we conducted an analysis of the factors of vulnerability in relation with force, um, labor in indigenous communities in Loreto as well, when we found a factor of uh, alienation because people who were part of indigenous communities, indigenous communities members accepted to participate in productive activities. And this is what Commissioner Mantilla was referring to. They, they knew that what they were going through, it was exploit was in a situation of exploitation and also the activity that they were performing was illegal. They knew this. So why did that happen? That information also made us question if the indicators of forced labor that was the, that were developed in 2012 by the ILO needed to be rethought in uh, from the perspective of Latin America and specifically from the perspective of Peru. This also happened in cases related to gender uh, approach policies, which is not my specialty, so I leave that to my colleagues. Thank you, Luis. So that will be all on my part. Thank you, Carolina. Mariana, go ahead. So very briefly, I wanted to um, comment on three things. First, I think that there has been um, a progress. NGOs have really made efforts to develop instruments and protocols and models for assistance. And we always found the same obstacle. The states and state institutions with a legal mandate to assist, protect, and address human trafficking are not doing so. They are not meeting their, their mandate. The same excuse is always given. They have no resources. They are providing training. What is lacking here is mechanisms to force states to comply with the commitments that they have taken when they ratified conventions of human rights, both at the national uh, the UN level and the OAS level. I think there have been best practices fostered by civil society organizations. One of them is the uh, additional claimant, which has been a fundamental Guatemala to um, ensure access to justice for human trafficking. Another best practice has been the incorporation of the regional network of specialized uh, prosecutors in human trafficking. That includes the whole Central America, uh, Dominican Republic, Panama, that has favored the protection and the access to justice for victims of human trafficking in transnational situations. So I think there have been regional spaces that are really significant. We have found good officials. We cannot say that they are all bad. There are some of them who are aware of this, but most of them, despite the efforts for uh, awareness and training, are not responding to uh, uh, com complying with the principles that should uh, guide the comprehensive addressing of human trafficking. The campaign uh, Blue Heart, it continues to be relevant in Guatemala. The, all years this is being implemented, but uh, people sometimes do not are not even aware of the campaign. So that is the problem. There are public policies in all countries of the Central American region, but there are no funds, there are no resources. This is the same excuse. There is no enough budget. There is no money. We do not have enough staff. So the situation continues to be the same despite the great efforts in research, information, and knowledge generation that have been done by the civil society organizations. 
it's extremely important for us um, to to have the commission issue recommendations so that we can continue strengthening our efforts in terms of accountability for those institutions that have a mandate to address this crime. thank you very much i don't know who's next go ahead vivian thank you carolina thank you mariana I would like to also comment on the case of Ecuador, Kurukawa. This was also brought to the commission in 2021. Kurukawa is a Japanese company that had more than 100 people in tobacco plantations in state of modern slavery. The state did not recognize the violation of the rights of these people on the behalf of this uh, business. So I think there's a lack of political will the necessary will for all to, to address this, because there are international standards and public policies, but there is no political willingness to implement these international standards to avoid, even by omission, the massive violation of human rights of women and girls and, 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 and boys even. So that is also our, our purpose here. The recommendations should serve to, to urge the states so that they can also acknowledge when a business or individual is subjecting someone else to, to slavery or forced labor or other exploitation, they also should um, allocate the necessary resources so that all trainings and all public policies that they have implemented uh, ever since the existence of the Palermo Protocol are effective. Thank you, Vivian. To conclude with our intervention, uh, Luis Enrique and Mariana, I would like to comment on what was mentioned by several commissioners. In relation with what Commissioner Joel Hernandez said, there are international standards in place, but the Protocol of Palermo has had very negative consequences in public policies. Why do I say this? While it has managed to have countries uh, cooperate internationally, it has a punitive approach because the states have to comply with certain obligations, but everything that has to do with protection of victims is not as uh, obligatory. Also, the justice systems have not been able to uh, recognize uh, human trafficking dynamics, particularly the phenomenon of force label in formal uh, environments. This has also been pointed out by the ILO. And of course, the human trafficking situation in domestic situations. Since the Protocol of Palermo was created in terms of transnational human trafficking, unfortunately, there are some paradigms that uh, are in the hands of justice operators. So when in practice, those situations do not have that cinematography, let's say, to, to, to the, they um, are not protecting the victims. So in that sense, if society has said this in different opportunities, we are warning on the gaps that the approach related to organized crime is uh, preventing from uh, identifying other situations such as forced marriage or uh, even even forced criminality. And from that perspective, we believe that drafting recommendations or standards that can um, truly dismantle this could could point to to having a justice system understanding the, the significance of this. Also, as my colleague said, the Blue Heart campaign is a, a good option, but there is a, a previous gap. States have not allocated funds for public policies in terms of human trafficking. The different operators work through the allocation of their own budgets and in the end this is up to the political willingness of the persons in charge but 
there are no specific resources for human trafficking policies. In relation with comments by Commissioner Roberta Clark, we thank you for all your comments and, and your contributions, but in relation with the patterns of vulnerability, on top of uh, echoing with what my colleague Luis Aguilar said, there is a great variety, but we do believe that it's necessary to strengthen one thing, which is that the weak persons are victims of human trafficking. We know this. Civil society knows this. And it has been uh, said by the academia. What? Who do I mean by the weak persons? I mean the persons in our region that show characteristics that according to international standards would be considered uh, reasons for discrimination when they are uh, addressed. Well, those are precisely the characteristics that are uh, leveraged by the by the traffickers, women. That is, uh, people who are in in poverty situation, in in social discrimination, ethnic discrimination, uh, discrimination on the basis of gender. Those are the vulnerabilities that are taking advantage of because the dynamics of human trafficking that we observe in our countries and. Uh, which is made worse by the lack of action on the part of our states is that there is no policies to, to, to or, or action to protect those people who we know are vulnerable. As Commissioner Clark has also said, we have the the challenge of this gap. We have the norms, but we do not see how it's implemented. So the Inter-American Commission could strengthen the the, re the urge to have that be effective, that is to do, to really create a valuable tool so that we can have states comply with their obligations. Finally, with regard to what Commissioner Julie Samantia said uh, as regards sexual violence or what happens if the women uh, become pregnant, well, the panorama is really discouraging. What we saw in Chile is that uh, Venezuelans who are minors, they come here uh, pregnant, they are in houses of people who have deceived them, and officials do not recognize the situation as human trafficking, and they are uh, just left aside. And also, we were able to identify the linkage between extractive businesses and sexual violence, and force sexual uh, work. And so in our region, these companies are not addressing this challenge. And what we observe is that the connection with due diligence in terms of human rights for businesses is a useful path to connect them with the agenda against human trafficking and finally, I have to insist on one thing. Uh, human trafficking has a direct connection with human mobility, but that also that only shows transnational trafficking. Our countries are living through po problems of internal human trafficking of, of indigenous populations and of migrant population in irregular migration status. So what we are seeing is how the Palermo protocol prevents the detection of the situation that happens within countries. So finally, I want to thank what Commissioner, uh, what, what Mrs. Maria Claudia Pulido said with regards to a thematic report and to be uh, able to include this in the strategic plan in 2024. And of course, we thank the president of the Inter-American Commission for her words and for the need that she spoke of, of the, of the joint work in training, information and action. And of course, we remain available to contribute with anything that you decide to do to move forward in the protection of the rights of human trafficking victims. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much um, for your participation today. I can't thank you enough, but that's for later. I see that Commissioner 
Joel Hernandez has his hand up. So please proceed, my brother. Thank you very much, Madam President. As usual, we don't have enough time to keep on discussing many of these issues. Of course, the Rapporteurship for Persons in Human Mobility is at your disposal, so we can go on with this dialogue at a different space. But I wouldn't want to wrap up before uh, reacting to what Carolina said, because yes, I do believe that there's an angle that has been invisibilized. It's the trafficking that happens within countries when there is no uh, border crossing. There is one of the elements of the crime, which is the uh, transfer of a person from one place to another. But this is done inside the domestic borders of a state. So the uh, regulations will be different. And this should be pointed out. And this is not, a, um, it's not that the Palermo protocol is at fault for this because that was not the way the protocol was planned. It, now it does have a punitive perspective, yes, but against uh, traffickers, and this is something we should take into consideration because we are trying to protect the victims, but we should also ask the states to have more assertive measures to fight crime because that's how people become victims. So the objective was always clear. Now, of course, the protocol is not perfect, uh, not at all, as you have pointed out. Article 6, it has some uh, recommendations, of course, and that is the result of a multilateral negotiation. And as happens with any other instrument, and the drafting was not satisfactory, so much so that the European countries at uh, the European Council decided to draft another document, the um, covenant on the uh, fight against human trafficking from 2005 to try to uh, point at much higher standards in terms of protection. But we should remember that as you well said, the protocol has led to something very important, getting countries to have uh, the resources so as to um, create uh, the category so that uh, trafficking can become or can be considered a crime. So I think that is very important. Uh, we have said it yourselves, my colleagues have said it, but implementation is the toughest part. In these occasions, that's the problem because not all legislations have incorporated these international elements. They have not incorporated these elements. So that is so by me, I see that we've run out of time. I'm being punished by the timer. So I won't punish you by, keep, by keeping on speaking, but thank you very, very much for this interesting conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Howell. Um, please, could you stay with your cameras open? Um, the photographer needs to take a photograph um, before I just close, uh, but I'll do that in less than a minute. Thank you so much for remembering, for Madam President. I'm trying. I'm trying. See, I'll just take a second. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye-bye.